farmers use all sorts of tools, from very big tools like tractors through to small tools. And I'm going into this workshop to look at some of the tools. But do you know, birds use all sorts of tools. So I'm going to look at some of the tools that are on this workbench and show you how they relate to the birds' beaks. And the first one is a pair of pliers. And it's actually a special pair of pliers which has got little rough edges so that the farmer can grab hold of things. And that's exactly what a greenfinch or a sparrow would do. It would not only grab hold of the seed, but it then uses those rough bits so that they can hold onto the seed and they can take the coating off the seed and swallow the nice soft bit inside. So that was a pair of pliers. Now here's a specialised pair of pliers, a far sharper nose, very, very pointed, which a farmer might use for grabbing hold of small bits within an engine, for instance. A bird like a, like a blue tit and an insect eater has this sharp bill. It can get into the corners and in between bits of wood and, and get an insect out. And sometimes these noses of these pliers are really, really long and then they're called snipe nose pliers. And snipe is a bird with a very long beak. It's using its tool on the front of its head to go into the ground and it can then wiggle the bottom bit about. So I'm sure a farmer would love to be able to move the end of the pliers into the corner, but they're all metal. But for a bird's beak, the end can be quite flexible. So here I've got a bird that was found dead at the edge of the field and it's called a woodcock. And, and the name wood means that it's, it's a bird that lives in woodland. Woodcocks are absolutely delightful birds. They are brown, but there's so many different colours of brown. It gives them camouflage, and then on the front of their face, they have this very long tool, their bill. I reckon that must be getting on for 10 centimetres. And the idea of this very long beak is that it can dig into the ground and get hold of a worm and then pull it out. And this extra fascinating little bit is that the end bit of the beak can be flexed up and down so that once the beak is in the hole, it can still wiggle the ends around, which is very clever indeed, uh, and enables them to get the food. So that's just a couple of different types of specific tools. But in fact, birds have got a huge number of tools that they bolt onto their front of their heads. So for instance, there are bills that are curved upwards so that birds can sweep for insects in water. There are bills that are crossed over at the end so they can get inside fir cones and take the seeds out from them. There are bills which look like spades. Shovelers have got bills that look like spades where they actually can dig in the mud to take out the small insects that are there. Here's another tool in the workshop. It's a hammer. Now you might think, well, birds can't have hammers on the front of their heads as beaks, but they do. They have hammers so that they can hammer into wood. So, for instance, woodpeckers, woodpeckers peck wood, and what their bill is doing is acting like a hammer. And in fact, there are even insulators in their head so they don't get headaches when they're actually hammering into wood. So I think it's obvious that I'm fascinated by birds and when I'm outside I look at birds, but everybody can do that. When you're out in the countryside, when you're in a park, when you're in a garden, look at the birds and just look at the way they're using tools. Just like a farmer has a whole range of tools in his workshop, so birds have got a range of different tools they use to feed themselves.